In this episode we're gonna go to Vancouver Island and explore the western shore through back roads as much as possible unless there's gonna be blockages, uh, washed out roads and bad those kind of conditions then it's gonna be lots of detouring because there's only highway on this eastern portion of the island and everything else is back roads. What the conditions are, who knows. That's the plan and I'll introduce you in the morning to my new comrade in crime, Eric. Good morning comrades, so we are at Vancouver Island. Yesterday, late in the evening, I think it's like 8.30, set sail on the ferry, took us about two and a half hours, and then we went to Nanaimo Lake, but apparently all the roads are blocked. Like people warned me that uh, on Vancouver Island there's lots of cases where you just have gates everywhere. That was the case last night. Two access to the lake, where there's supposed to be free campgrounds, blocked off. So. I spent another hour till 2 a.m. and arrived at the southern tip of Lake Kovichan. So the trip is going to be three days full and fourth day return home. Uh, today is our first day. We're living a little late, but it's okay. We arrived very late last night. We needed some rest, coffee and that. And this is the rig of uh, Eric. So this is Eric. Hi, everybody. We <laughs> used to uh, actually... <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> all right, so this is Eric. Hi everybody, uh, it's interesting because uh, Victor and I used to work together at uh, Electronic Arts yeah, for a while. But we never actually interacted at work, yeah. like he had his it's own big, big boss but... office, <laughs> you being big shot and I'm like, I it's don't know. A, it's a big place, but uh, we finally have a, a shared interest in trucks uh, <laughs> and off-road adventures and so that's what we're doing uh, this weekend. It's, a, it's an exciting adventure so far with lots of filming. <laughs> 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 well, without further ado, let's hit the road. This place got narrow very quickly up front. Problem is we're fat and have to fold mirrors and actually we're gonna do sporting one at a time. He'll help me get back and then I'll help his truck. Coming. Okay, sharper, sharper, get, uh, sharper. Okay, yeah, you got it. Alright. To the right. Ah, that rear camera really helped. Battle scars somewhere. Yeah, yeah, would you do it without your camera? Sorry? Without your camera, would you do it? Oh, not, not without help. Yeah. I'd want help. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. No, that seemed way too easy what you just did. So we're gonna try another approach here. We're gonna go to Nitinat River Provincial Park and from there we're gonna try to take a little road. So it seems like the guys on my Facebook page were right. So far it's proven to be true. This is since yesterday our, I don't know, fifth already. A little uh, blockage detour to go on the highway uh, to get to some northern parts is gonna be huge. It's gonna be a huge waste of time. It's not at all, not at all. But so far the day is not working out how it should be, that's for sure. Poor little Mr. Beast. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do. Alright, Eric's being a hero here, cutting trees, expedition overland style. That was actually fast. Wow, this soil is great. So, first obstacle. Let's get this out of the way as well. Okay. Alright, let's plow through. I bet my wrap is scratched somewhere. <laughs> oh, we'll check out damage later. <laughs> Those are victory scratches. Oh yeah. All right, thankfully no damage from that thing. Just uh, little scratches and mostly mud. Yeah, Solo would definitely do things differently. I saw him already standing there and I was like, ah, whatever, just go. And I totally- I'm to be a bad influence. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> a reckless I influence. wanna be your bad influence and make you start drink. <laughs> 
Oh, okay, that can be one. A that can be a just goal. one tonight. Okay. All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. So we're gonna continue to Golden River uh, through the caves. I think it was called Upqua or something like that. But it's getting dark, not gonna make it. So we decided, hey, Elk Falls, suspension, suspension bridge, why not do that? And then we'll camp early and visit the, visit the cave tomorrow. The problem with uh, the caves and that whole route is I'm connecting Tahris town through some off-road to Zigalis or something like that. And basically that route somehow is blocked in any possible way. There is no other road around. We would have to go all the way back to Campbell River, do a huge loop and basically waste a whole day tomorrow. So, uh, well, today, potentially at night. So we're actually gonna <laughs> try to do that tomorrow and potentially could waste tomorrow doing that. But at least we'll be able to see what's happening. Yeah, at least it will be yeah, during daylight. Track it won't be. It won't be a midnight backtrack. We'll be doing it at a reasonable time. Yeah, yeah, de definitely don't want to repeat yesterday and arrive somewhere at what, 2, 2, 2 a.m.? Yeah, exactly, 2 a.m. Yeah, I mean, after all this one weekend, supposed to be a little vacation as well, not just driving constantly, which is kind of weird that I'm saying that because I'm always like, drive, 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 drive everywhere. Because it's such a short span and I've been busy, I kind of feel like just you know, having a proper camping time, like actually sit down, have a beer, whatever, cook something. Like we have tons of food to cook. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'll be the chef.
gonna go to Campbell Lake right now and make it a stop there. Probably gonna arrive at 8 and the free spot, hopefully it's accessible, is called Big Bay. And if there is light, I'll shoot it. Actually, I can shoot it in the morning. I'll probably do that. This is uh, the morning of the, day two. the second real day. Yeah, last last uh, day we had a pretty good time, but the roads were a little bit more simple than I think we were expecting. Just gravel, gr gravel forestry roads. Uh, we did have one stretch that was quite exciting. It was very narrow. Uh, it, had, it was quite overgrown. Uh, it had a few tricky sections with ruts and ridges and such uh, and I think we both scraped the bottom of our trucks a little bit uh, which was exactly what we needed so <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. a little break from just dirt roads basically and so here we are we're camping uh, just in the middle of nowhere we couldn't find any campgrounds uh, and we're serenaded by frogs all of last night which was really beautiful so it was seven o'clock we were like yes we're gonna arrive somewhere in time cook them proper meals enjoy sunset all that so we're going to one of my locations for free camping spot arrived there packed with people not so wild spot after all and uh, checked out a few other camping spots nearby forgot the lake names and uh, it's everything booked friday you know people just got out of work and uh, we're cruising, 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 kind of with an idea. Let's just find a little dead end on some back road and just park there. And it was already nine o'clock and we still couldn't find anything really. It's like a maze of roads here. But the whole Vancouver Island seems like a maze of roads. But Half of always, which are closed off. Yeah, you constantly arrive at blocked roads or a real dead end. Uh, just, uh, but on the map, it doesn't say dead end and you arrive and it's not even blocked off it's just overgrowth like like completely you don't see the road whatsoever it's just like the road never even existed there so it's kind of weird how it's mapped uh, maybe like 20 years ago it existed who knows so be prepared if you go on Kura island to just navigate the endless maze of <laughs> impossible things we're looking for all the places we took this narrow road and by chance as we started driving it, I saw, oh, there's a campground indicated on the map. However, it is it is there, but it's not accessible for this road. There is like a pedestrian little bridge or something. And uh, we had to make decisions. Like, try to get, it was already nine. Try to get out of here, back, back up, because there is no way to turn. We're actually gonna probably spot each other right now. There's a couple of big uh, logs and stones in there. Uh, so yeah, spend that time and try looking for something else or just, make this whatever patch of road our home and it was actually awesome we did have some nice cooking proper meals and chats yeah, and uh, it was as a usual good... he didn't drink beers <laughs> upsets me <laughs> but i did have tea and that's the important thing
Okay. All right. So now is the time to start getting out of here and do a little bit of spotting for each other. In reverse, all the way. I'll try my best. <laughs> This will not be as easy with my stuff because he's using his rear camera. It's quite a way to back back up. All right, this is where with our fat guys it's gonna get a little tricky. Backing out should be well, it will be okay, but uh, we have to bend a little bit here. Had to last night the branches and everything. More, more of this way. Wait, 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 wait. Go forward a little bit. You need to be closer here. Like a little bit more forward. Okay, stop. And now turn to, yeah. Straight, straight, straight. To the right, to the right. A little bit. Straight. Oh, oh, oh. All right, one out, second to go. Okay, a little bit to the left. Yeah, good. Okay, straight back, straight back. Okay, uh, now there's a log on each side. So bias to the driver's side right now. Okay, that's good, straight back, straight back, that's good. You're good, you're good, you're good. Okay, now the next, now, now turn a little bit to the bias passenger side. Yep. Okay, you're good. Good, you can probably see the log. Yeah, you're good. You did that better than I did. <laughs> yeah, I moved it over a little bit. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to turn. Uh, yeah, you're, you're doing it right. Okay, if you pull tight to the rock, I'll pull the tree out of the way like you did. Okay, tight, tight to the rock. Okay, now straight, straight back. So as luck would have it, I'm in front because I'm the nav guy in this trip and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. This guy is not going. I'm like, oh shit, did he smack into some oncoming car? We're in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> Come back and I see this. Yeah, just started hissing. Like not rapidly, but enough to be concerned. Yeah, it wasn't like a loss of control situation, but uh, it went flat pretty fast. Oh, I'm curious actually. I'm going to lift your tire to see compared to 37s. That was quick and painless. Tire is light, yeah. In that regard, your setup is better. You just pop the tire from under the truck bed and done. Ironically that I'm still considering doing what you've already done, despite well, it being more hassle. Yeah, but tire punches don't happen too often. Too often, yeah. <laughs> 
and you want to utilize every bit of space. Yeah, in my case, it would take almost half an hour to just get the tire down. Undo all the chains, remove <clears throat> rotor packs to reach the bolts. The tire is much heavier. The lift needs to be a little higher in general to undo the tire all that, so not convenient whatsoever. Since we're gonna come out in Campbell River right now. Oh, here, what is that? Oh yeah, is there something inside? I don't know, I can't pry it out. What are those things, the square? Forgot, maybe you told leveling me. Leveling the truck when I'm, cause I'm tenting. Oh, well, same with me. Okay, cool, actually. Maybe I should invest in those. Cause I'm just using uh, uh, wooden blocks. The nice thing is you can kind of decide how tall you want it to be, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they're cheap, but uh, you know, they use this much volume, so. It's almost. Enough. You want them enough to use. It's pretty much the same volume as my uh, four wooden blocks. Yeah. However, because they're not as big square like this, I store them behind the seat. You know, but un just the back seat under. Oh uh, yeah. Just enough space to fit them all in there. Yeah. Off we go. I guess to the Campbell River uh, tire shop. Eric, we have arrived. What do you think of this? This is fantastic. This is uh, absolutely the highlight of the trip thus far. This is side bay. It It's just a crazy thing where you can just drive right onto the beach. We'll find oh, a place man. to camp. It's going to be fantastic. And we might stay. I think we might stay here actually. We might. There's, the a, there's, a, there's a lot of reason to be here. Like it's... there's definitely a whole lot in there to explore. Then uh, can go explore over there. There's some cave. You can do fishing from rocks, like those rocks. Oh my god! And I have just lures, like no it's, artificial stuff. It's gonna be fantastic. Oh yeah! And look at this awesome beast. Well, we just did uh, like a rally, basically. Yeah. It's like 50 between trees. Super speedy. It was awesome. All right, let's go find a slot.
Well, good morning everyone and welcome to Side Bay. This place is amazing and actually in a bit here I'm gonna go to those rocks and see the mussels and that kind of sort of thing before tide is gonna come over again. This is Eric taking a nap. He was in a relaxed state. Must not disturb this creature. Ugh. We had a major cookout here last night, so I had my stove here. I was doing some uh, potatoes with Ned. We had a uh, when he brought his pot, his stove put over here, I was like sitting over here. It's like doing Cajun bacon here, potatoes here, he's chilling over here on the table and chair, beers, all that, cutting board. It's just like, it was a full on kitchen right here. It's kind of nice sitting high, leveled. I think in Canada so far, this is the best place I've seen on the coast. Well, there is not a whole lot of coastal. Uh, kind of free beach spots like this overall near Vancouver but there is lots of lakes and I've been camping like this on lake shores not official campgrounds none of that just kind of drive in walk in deploy but uh, I think this is beats uh, many of those places this is awesome just the axe I, I bet there is absolutely amazing fish in here it's far north it's a backup. Basically what we decided with Eric is next time, let's say, we're here. We're gonna explore a few more places like this up north uh, the next time. But there is always fallback. If they don't work out, roads blocked, whatever, we can always come here. That's a, it's a guaranteed awesomeness. So we decided we're gonna go to that spot over there. Yeah. Because this fine gentleman here who is kind of local he said there is actually some mussels to be gathered and uh, we want some of those we want to live here in a high high style high life yeah munching on three dollar oysters
And yeah, some people get here on those cars too. And it's okay. come to a close of the main event. Uh, we spent our second night on this beach at Side Bay. It's fantastic. Uh, had a great time. It's uh, Last night it was clear. It even uh, had some stars. Uh, and now we're packing up. Going to do a little bit more exploration around the bend and then head on home. Yeah, it's very sad to leave. The days as usual went by so freaking quick. I would definitely come back here again. Uh, I think this is a a unique spot in as much as you can park right on the beach and camp which is I don't know anywhere else like that you can do this uh, on the west coast yeah for sure on the seaside we uh, we can't absolutely do this but also here up north that little spot we're gonna check out it's probably gonna be kind of like that so we'll see if it's gonna happen it's gonna be part of the footage but uh, if this is the end of the video it means it wasn't that great <laughs> That is true, that is true, yeah. In any case, well, till next adventure. I've never been the one who's worried Always been the one who's keeping it cool The kind of guy who chill while others hurry I didn't know that I've been the fool I've been telling lies about some... Oh, I totally saw you uh, going for a little freedom run. I totally saw you go, go for a little freedom run and then you touch. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, what is Beautiful scenery. So this is good in Cove. Good place to stay too. Although the sand here, yeah, for sure, very kind of treacherous in this place. So, but still, there is place here to park. Here, here, over there. Kind of quite a few places. Uh, but without four-wheel drive and all-terrain tires, no. This is, but also what makes it uh, harder for us is we are, I guess, almost four tons each. So something, you know, heavier than like a Jeep by almost twice. Uh, so we are more prone to uh, bog up in the sand, mud, everywhere. Which still is kind of good, we're not heavy duty. Heavy duty is kind of started like, I don't know, four and a half thousand, four and a half tons, and then you add overland gear and all that stuff. You're probably gonna see that like five and a half tons. So like a uh, ton and a half heavier than our guys. He had his little uh, freedom run here. <laughs> totally when he started going through water there. I'm like, yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> I don't know how good the speakers are, the camera ones. What do you have to say for yourself? 
Uh, I'd do it again in a second. If I wasn't around, would you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for yeah. the use of the traction pad. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, like, once you're solo, game changes. Yeah. Uh, you, you wouldn't just uh, drive across the beach like that. Well, I hope you liked this episode, and if you did, you can support me by uh, hitting the like button, subscribe, and also check out my previous videos uh, by hitting the links below or just after this video.